All right, this morning we're at Zach's place. We're gonna put down some self-leveling underlayment to put VCT, LVT, what's going on top of it? LVT. Put some uh, LVT plank flooring. Not the hardest job in the world, but there's some obstacles to it. I'm counting one, two, about five different floor surfaces. Concrete, some slate. It looks like there's some plywood, a pad of old linoleum where the washer and dryer goes. And there's also a lot of door openings and space openings in this as well too. So kind of the main floor, the most uneven floor, right, is this slate tile with all the grout lines. So laying floor right over the top, we weren't sure that we'd get a quite as even of a floor as we wanted. So rather than having to break all this up, which I don't know how many hours that would have taken yeah. and how sore my back would have been afterwards, but we decided to try and go this route. We did have some other stuff going on in this room, so we had some drywall mud and some paint and things like that. So the first thing we did is we took a, a razor scraper and basically went through and scraped up all the big chunks, everything we could find. Um, we did some painting in here kind of while the room was, you know, in its construction state. So there was, you know, a couple of clumps of paint here and there that was easy to pop up with this as well. I think the best part about that scraper too is that blade's pretty flexible on it. You have to keep in mind, anytime you're using a scraper on a floor, you're always jamming it into something. It's ramming into it. Right. That flexibility kind of helps absorb the shock against your hands. Yeah. And it also kind of helps it, helps it do the work too. Bunch of different sizes. I actually had a longer one too. So I did the whole room with that, with about a, uh, I think it was a 24 inch blade on that one. It did not take very long with that longer blade. And then this one was nice in the, the smaller room to, to get out. So it, it was fast work. We sprayed uh, foam into all the, the joints basically to kind of give a little bit of an expansion joint, but as well as to keep stuff from running too far away, right? There's a basement on this half, so stuff could find a hole and travel because yep. it kind of runs like water. So um, there's a chance that uh, you'd kind of have a, a hole in the boat type of a situation I, that... I've had a job before where it leaked into a basement and you, you waste about 25% of your floor before you find out either where it's leaking from or it's got to stiffen up enough to where it won't travel through the hole anymore. Right. So it was, it was a lot of work and a lot of work to cut back the foam once we were done. But uh, that was probably the biggest prep work of this whole job to yep. make sure to get right because you don't want to be in the low corner and all of a sudden bags are flowing out your house somewhere. Um, so we actually went around and put tap cons in certain spots of the floor. Uh, we found our high spot. We put the tap cons to the top of the high spot. I think we put 10 tap cons down, probably, wouldn't you say? Yep. yep. And uh, that's going to help us gauge how high uh, top of floor needs to be. All right, so we've got an extension pole here. So the kind of the plan with this is when we're putting down the, the primer, um, was to not kind of be on our hands and knees to kind of save our backs a little bit. So we went with just, it's just a standard roller. Yeah, the primer that we've got to, uh, we got to put down some primer that uh, we'll, we'll water down. So we'll use one of these nice buckets here that actually have the, the measurements on the side for us. So yep. um, that should make that even easier. We don't have to get, you know, any, any, other, any other tool out. We'll fill it up with water and dump in and go. And that bucket's semi-transparent, so we'll actually be able to see the measurements as we're adding water and adding the primer to it from the outside of the bucket, which is nice. Probably lay the primer a little bit thicker on this slate um, than we will everywhere else. I think we'll probably dilute it a little bit when we put it down on that on that concrete pad. Give it plenty to stick to. That's that's a little porous too. Yep. So we'll probably do. I think there's there's typically directions on whatever brand you get to to dilute it. So we'll we'll dilute it with a five gallon bucket per the recommendations and start rolling. Yep. But I think we'll probably go thicker here, would I you would. say? Yep. Give it, um, primer will do a good job attacking the floor up, just lets the, lets the underlayment bond. So the underlayment that we got is just standard product for most hardware stores, yep. big box chains have it. We'll probably mix up two or three buckets to start with before we put anything down. Yep. So we can tell if we're finding that low spot or not. And then... Uh, uh, and it basically flows like water. Yep. It's not anything you have to trial down. You don't really have to use a gauge rake or anything special for it. You start close to your low spot, let it, let it kind of find its first level in the low spot and then start pulling away from that with our bucket. So let's just make sure when we're done, we, uh, we end up in an exit, 
not over yeah, in that corner yeah. somewhere. We do have some special shoes though that, that might help us there in case we do find ourselves in a jam. Yep, yeah, those will be lifesavers for us. We've got some uh, some squeegees and even a, a concrete placer in case we run into something we we're not expecting. I'm guessing if we do need to use one, it's gonna be this guy. He's got a blade that's, I've always liked this for doing drywall or uh, anything else with it, but you can actually adjust the blade to the pitch that you want. Added it with a five foot handle for a little bit longer reach because we might not have to get in the overlay um, if we have, have a long enough handle for it. And this would be just for, if we do get, get a little bit high, just taking some of the weight away from the puddle and kind of uh, pulling it back towards a higher spot. The squeegee Zach has, that's more for moving material ahead of you. Uh, we both like being prepared though. So if for some reason we do have to have that, if something gets away from us, we, we have a backup plan. We're hoping that that won't be the case and it'll just kind of go to the places it needs to do. And uh, I think after uh, 12 hours, they say you can lay floor down. So tomorrow morning we'll be laying floor. Mm -hmm.